It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. I am thankful that you're with me today as we conclude a very fun week here at the Daily Dog with a masterpiece Friday edition. And y'all, do we have a masterpiece to listen to today? I have been uh, waiting to give a proper listen to this piece for several months. It has finally appeared on the channel and I am glad you are here. The song, my friends, is Shine On, You Crazy Diamond by Pink Floyd. There have been many, many people that have suggested this song. I have heard, I think, parts of it. There are, like, the main vocal theme that, uh, you know, Shine On, You Crazy Diamond, that sounds familiar to me, but the rest of the piece, the context of it, is something that I have not in the past paid attention to. Uh, this song is a nine-part composition written by David Gilmore, Roger Waters, and Richard Wright. It is from their 1975 concept album, Wish You Were Here. And as I look into the track listing, I believe that Wish You Were Here is the only song on that album that I know with any uh, familiarity. Uh, so I am really uh, eager to get into this one today. Uh, as I read in, uh, this song is written about and dedicated to Sid Barrett who uh, left the band in 1968 due to his deteriorating uh, mental health. Uh, Sid, I don't know much about Sid, y'all, uh, just what I've read today and what some of our patrons uh, have, have discussed with me in the past. Uh, Sid was a founding member of Pink Floyd who struggled with uh, drug use and with mental health and could no longer be counted on, I guess, by the band. So he was dismissed, and I think it was David Gilmore that replaced him. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, uh, how this works with uh, how the band has uh, put together this very long piece, a nine-part suite uh, dedicated to their friend. Um, the entire song is split on the album, which I also find intriguing. Uh, parts one through five open the album, and parts six through nine uh, conclude the album. So what I have today is the original studio recording my friends, and we are going to listen to uh, parts one through five, and then there will be a break, and then we'll listen to uh, the last bit. But um, I have a feeling we're going to go just right in from one to the other. So who do we have performing for us today? Uh, Roger Waters on bass and vocals and glass harp. Sounds interesting. David Gilmore on guitars, vocals, and the lap steel guitar. Richard Wright on many different kinds of keyboards. Looks like a Hammond a mini Moog, uh, some synthesizers, a clavinet, a grand piano, and he is also uh, on vocals. Nick Mason on drums and percussion. They have uh, Dick Bear, uh, Perry, sorry, Dick Perry uh, uh, on the baritone and tenor saxophones, and then a couple of other backing vocalists, Carlina Williams and Vanetta Fields. So, uh, uh, it's a long piece, my friends. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Um, as far as a cocktail today, I have decided not to have a, an alcoholic beverage, but I do have a little bit of uh, our herbal friend with us if we decide uh, that the uh, the feeling is right along this song. So uh, let's dive in, shall we? This is Shine On, You Crazy Diamond by Pink Floyd. Here we go. Soft opening. Dum. Up there in G. That's what that sus suspended note is. Sounds like G minor. Getting louder. Big fat bass sound. It could almost be an orchestral opening. You know, with the strings and the bass and all that sort of stuff.
I'm not sure what that instrument is. Is that one of the synthesizers, early synthesizers, the lead instrument? Going back to that uh, fa, the fourth note of the scale, before it resolves. I mean, he hasn't even hardly played yet, and already it sounds like, yep, yeah, that's David Gilmore. <laughs> It's a cool chord that they went to, minor five, minor four. Mm. Back to one. Sets up kind of a bluesy sound by the way that uh, David is playing, but also by the chord progression that kind of underpinned that. intro, y'all. Back to that minor five. Down to the four. This is a heavy, heavy sound. Just kind of grounds you, right? Back up to five. Down to one. Getting louder still. Still in, on that, still on that G minor chord, but the note that that ends on is an E natural. That's law in that key, which makes it to me sound like, a, like it's from Dorian mode. That that it's like a G minor, add six, but natural six. that sets up the major four chord. Nice. Flat seven to one. And there's the flat at six. The E flat down to the five, which makes it sound more minor. And then the... It's a neat sound. The classical person in me would want to categorize that potentially as E half diminished, making the E uh, the root of the chord if you arrange them all in thirds, but it really is functioning as an added sixth over the G. Uh, and then it stays in for the major four chord. Oh, 
have I not ever listened to this? What the hell is wrong with me? There's the minor four as compared to the major four that we were hearing before, back to the minor one. Hmm. It's got to be one of the synthesizers, right? Unless it's an interesting guitar sound. Lay to soul, back to do. True five seven with the leading tone. Ah. There's anguish in that sound. There's true grief. It's like hearing psychedelic blues. The 
major four chord with the seven, back down to G minor. G minor is a somber key, at least for me it is. Okay. neighbor is trying to start his boat, you know? Almost like it's like a machine. What is that? Oh, it's going to segue into the next piece. So this is how they stop parts one through five with the segue. That just sort of sort of floats away. And that's going to segue to the next piece. Wow. Y'all. I am enjoying myself so far. I hope you are as well. Let me talk. Before we play parts uh, six through nine, that, uh, let's see, it was part four where the vocals come in. And it's, it's really fascinating musically how this sets up because... They had this, they're in G minor, they had this chromatically descending bass line. It starts on the G, it goes down to F sharp, it goes through F, it goes through E natural, it goes through E flat, all the way down to D, the fifth of that key to set up dominant to reset it and go back to G minor. And that is a classic lament bass line, that gradually chromatically descending bass line. It's used all over every type of music that I've ever heard. Uh, as an expression, an outward expression of grief or sadness. However, uh, you know, uh, they turn that around and start ascending the bass. I think they started on the E flat, went up through E, went to F, went up to F sharp, and then they all went, went all the way back up to G that way. And stepping that way is almost an encouraging or optimistic uh, sort of sound and that matches the lyrics. Uh, exactly, y'all. So um, the, part of the lyrics are uh, remembering uh, or like lamenting grief. Uh, remember when you were young, you shone like the sun. Now there's a look in your eyes like black holes in the sky. You were caught on the crossfire of childhood and stardom, blown on the steel breeze. Um, and then they say, then they change from looking into the past and they start encouraging. They say, come on, you target for faraway laughter. Come on, you stranger, you legend, you martyr, and shine. Later on, they say, come on, you raver, you seer of visions. Come on, you painter, you piper, you prisoner, and shine. They are encouraging him to be better, uh, to, to get back to his, uh, to Sid, you know, to get back to his, uh, the best version of himself. And the music turns optimistic, at least in the way that the chords work. That's really cool to me, y'all. Uh, so let's go right into uh, parts uh, six through nine. Let me get my notes back uh, where we are. So uh, let's dive in. Here we go. And that sounds like the wind at the end of Wish You Were Here. Because that one I've heard. I don't know why I've never listened to it go on. I just don't have, I don't have the album. So I've only heard the track. And they're back in G. Hmm.
Sounds like a slow six again, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, five, six. Going back to some of these uh, classic 70s recordings, it's amazing to me the sound. Because modern music, for the most part, the way that they just over process it, doesn't sound nearly as good as this. And this isn't even LP, right? It's just digital, but holy crap, it sounds wonderful. Again, angst, just grief. Right? Mm. Flat six, five. Faster tempo, but still in the compound too. One, two, and two. So bluesy. I forgot to talk about that. They're doing it again. That's a five. One. Okay, y'all, I had to stop it just for a second. What they're doing, when I hear this sound, they're in G minor when they go down to an E flat in the bass, and the chord that I hear is an E flat dominant seventh sound. That's the chord that I hear. And the notes in that chord are an E flat, a G, and a B flat, and a D flat, right? So in the key of G minor, we've got the G, we've got the B flat, that's the minor third. We've got the E flat, we've, which is the flat six, right? So the note that's chromatic in that is the seventh of the chord, the D flat right which in the key of g is a you know a tritone a lowered fifth so what does that do that e flat uh so you get the e flat down here and you get the d flat up here and they both resolve outward by step to a d and a d forming the basis of a d chord which is the five of the key that goes back home so what that ends up being what we would call that in the classical uh sort of milieu uh, that e flat chord is not an E flat seven chord, but an augmented six chord, specifically a German augmented six chord. It works as a, like a leading tone chord, a double leading tone chord to the fifth of the key. Uh, we're going, if we have D down here and we have D up here, we're going to approach them both from their half steps. The E flat above by a step and the C sharp uh, below by a step and then resolve to that. And then that D then can get us back to G minor. Uh, it's something that is used all over classical music. I don't think in all the time that I've been doing these reactions, I've ever heard it in a, um, in a rock piece. Uh, so let it be known. There's, an, there's a German augmented six chord, uh, several of them hanging out in Shine On You Crazy Diamond. Very cool. We're going to keep rolling. really 
they've really been in like a, a standard four groove the whole piece I think I love that electric keyboard sound I've gotten to play a Fender Rhodes a few times uh, a friend had one I haven't played one in a long time the glass harp or just a slide guitar the way that they're uh, portamentoing between notes uh, that slide between notes is really interesting a new section New chord progression. 
back to the fire. So we didn't modulate keys. Yeah, they're still in G. That's a minor chord on the three, which is B flat minor. But it goes down to half minor. Sounds foreign because that brings in the A flat, which is flat two in the key that we're currently in. Also, just an exudes sadness, doesn't it? And it just exudes grief, but in a way that's enough that we, it's not overwhelming to me. It's not reminding me of my own grief. It's just that I can let it live a little bit and not overwhelm me and kind of feel it with them and almost be lifted because you've, you've processed a little bit by the time we get to the end of this. on G major. Well, I don't know if we've heard a B natural in the whole damn song. It just makes it brighten up, doesn't it? Gleaming, right? It's a lovely piece of music. It's really effective, y'all. It really is. There's not much lyrics in that, y'all. There's enough lyrics in that to uh, perfectly be at home in a two-minute piece in the middle of a vocal set. But they've turned it into a nine-part suite to honor and grieve for and... Uh, hope for betterment of their very good friend who f helped form the band. And it becomes universal then for all of us as we process the uh, grief of our own in whatever context. It really does capture these feelings of uh, grief or I don't know if guilt uh, is the right word for, uh, ousting Sid from the band. Um, but boy, it, uh, it, do, they do voice their appreciation, admiration for, uh, his legacy, you know, uh, for his creativity and for his songwriting. I read that, that Sid was one of the main songwriters at the beginning of Pink Floyd's, um, tenure, right. As, as an ensemble. Uh, and the lyrics, the lyrics are wonderful. They've got these great metaphors. We hear these, um, like the metaphor of the sun to describe, uh, like the potential of Sid and the largeness of Sid. But we also hear the metaphor of the black hole to maybe signify the, the light leaving the creativity. So, uh, I don't know the loss of his identity. Hmm. This one really struck me, my friends. Uh, I think it's a lovely way to to uh, to kind of cap out the week. It's been a 
fascinating week of music. We've had quite a carpool uh, of of pieces this week. And by the time I get to the end of every week, it's it's almost like processing. Like when I get to this point, the wrap up uh, of the last video of the week, and it's like I'm thinking of all of these different themes and ideas that uh, going through the music in this way has affected uh, my own sense and my own uh, emotions uh, and understanding of the human condition throughout the week. And that's what I think is so um, rewarding about um, listening to music in this intentional way. Of course, listening to music for pure enjoyment is something I do all the time. And uh, when I do, I'm not analyzing it, y'all. I'm just listening to it. That's the beauty of not having true, like, perfect pitch, is it's not bang the pitches aren't banging over me over the head when I'm listening for, for pleasure. Uh, I have to really concentrate. Uh, and I'm using my, um, my training and uh, my relative pitch uh, to, uh, to try to follow uh, what's going on. And... Um, it's um it's something i have a lot of experience at but uh it's it's an interesting way i love doing it because it 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 gets me into not just how the music sounds but why it sounds that way and that's where the meaning of the underlying music i think can be at its most revealing uh to us so uh, i hope that you enjoy these little jaunts with me through these classic pieces and uh wow what a masterpiece. Shine on, you crazy diamond is. I cannot believe that I haven't really processed that whole piece before in my life. It will become one of my favorites. Uh, I, am, I am sure of that. So from Pink Floyd all the way back in 1975, this has been all nine parts of Shine on, you crazy diamond. Thank you all for being with me today. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.